Welcome to this capabilities tutorial. I'm going to introduce myself and then I'd like to introduce you. Hi, I'm Melanie Ray. I'm the founder of Guided Business Plan. We are an entrepreneur education firm based in Los Angeles. I started this company years ago to simplify the process of creating strategic goals to grow your business. What started off as just a book to teach people how to create a business plan has evolved into 10 editions that target different audiences of entrepreneurs. We have startups who are just getting out there to those who are scaling, to those who are going after government and corporate contracts. So why I'm here is to show you a simple, easy way to create your capability statement. You can do it with me right now during this tutorial. We have about 30 minutes, 40 minutes together. So please plan to spend that time to actually write a draft of your plan. This is not just a watch me, this is a let's do it together. I wanna to introduce you. You are a diverse supplier, somebody who has an established business and is considering going after government or corporate contracts, or you're already doing that. And somebody has said, you need a capability statement or you need to improve your capability statement. So I wanna take you through what uh, the process typically looks like, why and when you might be asked for a capability statement. Meet Janet. She's super excited to pursue contracts to grow her business. Great introduction, Janet. Can I see your capability statement? Yes, I'll email it to you. Thank you so much for your time. A capability statement is a concise, one-page overview of your business. Its purpose is to provide specific information that will convince potential customers to do business with you. Mission accomplished, and next time, I'll be ready. As a recap, the capability statement is a one or two page document that summarizes what it is that you could do for a potential client. If you are going to use two pages, make sure the key information is in that first page because some people don't even look past that first page. So we're going to help you build the components of your capability statement in today's session. And we're going to use an approach I created years ago, which has been phenomenal in the classroom in terms of helping people create the content that they need to move their company forward. I created Demo Write Discuss early on when I first started writing the guided business plan books and I was competing against multi-million dollar companies. But what made me stand out was the fact that business owners who are extremely busy as it is, that they were able to attend a class and leave with a draft of their plan. I know there were other classes that have, you know, that lecture heavy format and that's what I attended for as I was exploring whether or not I did want to start a business. And it just made it so that you had to go back and figure it out on your own. So I didn't want that. I created this demo right discuss approach and that's what we're going to use today. So as we build out your capability statement, I would like you to see a demo of how it could be written, write it for yourself, hit pause and then write it, and then unpause and then let's just talk about it. Hear me ask you a few questions from the buyer's point of view. Did you answer the questions that a potential buyer might have? So that's how this process is going to go. Demo, write, discuss. You may be asked for a capability statement when you attend business matchmaking events. These range in terms of what they look like, especially now where they may be more virtual. Traditionally, when you went to an in-person business matchmaking event, say a trade show, you would stop by a company's booth and you would introduce yourself. 
There may be one other person waiting. There may be 50 other people waiting. So you don't have that much time to talk about your whole history. You got to focus in on what it is that you want that person to know so they want to follow up with you. So one of the ways that you can do that is you can work on your pitch, but you can also provide a capability statement that describes what it is that you do and how you can add value to their project. There are certain cornerstones of your capability statement. Cornerstones, components, pretty much the same thing. It just means there are some standards that are within every capability statement. Let's start at the top. You may be asked for a capability statement when you meet with a potential buyer or a potential business outreach professional. A business outreach professional is someone who is employed by a corporation or a government agency whose goal is to go out and meet different vendors who can provide value to their projects. They're looking for a wide variety of business types. Sometimes there's a specific project that they're sourcing for and other times they just want to see who they see and get to build a relationship with that person and then hopefully when there's an opportunity for a contract, reach out to that vendor at that time. So a business outreach professional has several different names or titles. It could be business outreach, supplier inclusion, supplier diversity, supplier uh, inclusion and diversity. It really depends on the company, but in general, they are there to help diverse suppliers make connections with their colleagues. In some cases, if not with their colleagues, with other opportunities that they are familiar with. So they are, they are your advocate, they are your um, source for information about a particular company, and they are overall are your champion as a diverse supplier. The format of a capability statement really ranges. You'll notice if you do a search online, it runs the gamut. So you can have some that are just text only and others that really look like a well put together marketing piece. You want to fit within that well put together marketing piece category. And this may be a good place to um, spend some money to hire a graphic designer to get that right look because you want it to be clear, concise, and easy to follow. So in terms of the formatting, just make sure that it reflects your brand and that it is easy to read. In terms of the key components of a capability statement, that is where there's less flexibility. You wanna make sure you have these key components. That way, as someone scans through it, they're able to make a comparison between you and another vendor. So let's just go through the list of what may be included on a capability statement. I wanna start with those items that are more like, you know, fact-based. They're just, you can look them up easily, such as your company name, your uh, contact information, certifications, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Industry codes, we'll talk about that later on too. Your logo, your picture. If you're the person who is doing sales and meeting these uh, business outreach professionals and, and meeting potential buyers, then your picture should be on that capability statement along with the founders. Again, it really is up to, up to your organization whether or not you wanna include both. But it's so important to have that voice, that a picture of that person who's out there meeting potential buyers to be on the capability statement so they can easily reference it later on. So the other components on a capability statement that may take some time to actually write are these sections. Your value add statement. It's also known as a value proposition statement, it's headline. There's a couple of different ways to phrase it, but again, it's that opening line that captures the attention of a potential buyer. Your company description, about three or four lines that introduces your business, your past performance, your differentiators, your core competencies. We're going to go through all those sections separately, but I just wanna give you an overview of what to expect. Another section I mentioned was your value proposition statement, your value add statement. Essentially, it's a headline. So I'm gonna use the word headline. This is the phrase that's going to capture the attention of your potential buyer. So you want to make it specific and highlight things that may capture their attention. So for example, with guided business plan, we have the headline of outreach convenes vendors, training closes deals. I'll say that again. Outreach convenes vendors, training closes deals. We know that business outreach 
They meet hundreds, if not thousands of business owners, and a lot of them have the qualifications, but they may not know how to navigate the industry or how to create the capability statement or how to pitch their company. So we provide training that mentors them in a group setting. We translate what they're looking for into packaged training content. So you see how we highlighted what it is that they, a, a challenge that they may be facing. So what challenge is your customer facing? Think about that when you create your headline. All right, so I know this section can be a little bit hard to, to develop. It may take some time. So I would just say, write the, write the first thing that comes to mind, because this is only what, 10, 10 words or so. So you wanna hone in on the words that really speak to your audience by just brainstorming. Here's another approach that you can do. So think of yourself as the buyer. You are looking for a graphic designer and you ask people to email you and to put in the subject line what it is that they do. What it is that's going to make you wanna open up that subject or open up that email. So you're starting to look at the list and you see where it says, we are certified as whether it's certified as minority, woman, veteran, LGBT, um, ability, that's what they have in their subject line. It's good, but it doesn't speak to the fact that you're looking for a designer. You're looking for a graphic designer. That's the first thing. Certification is important, but the first thing is, are they a graphic designer? So then you go up in your inbox and you see that it says, um, we are a graphic design firm. Graphic design firm, graphic design agency, marketing agency, Whatever the phrase is, they have that in their subject line. It's good, it puts them in the ballpark, but still it's just very generic. The next one says, we are, our, we are a graphic design agency in your city. You like that because you, like, you prefer to work with local companies. You like supporting local communities because they, give, they support you, you support them back. It's still, it's okay, but then what captures, captures your eye is this other subject line that says, Graphic designer, we translate your message into powerful marketing collateral. You already know that they get you. They know what it is that you want. You want some powerful marketing collateral. That's why you're hiring them. And so the fact is that they're already speaking your language. You want to learn more. So when you develop your headline, keep that in mind. What key or which key words are going to resonate with your uh, perspective customer, your potential buyer, and how do you present that in a way that explains who you are and why you should capture their attention? So for example, just back to us, guided business plan, outreach convenes vendors, training closes deals. At the end of the day, they want to be able to help businesses close deals. And so if training will do it, then they want to learn more. So check out a few examples and then let's see what you come up with. Your capability statement introduces who you are to a potential buyer. But before you get all into this is what makes us different or these are the clients that we have worked with in the past, simply introduce your company. Start with a one-liner. Maybe it's a one-liner and a tagline combined, but essentially you're telling them the name of your company, where you are located, where you are located or where you were founded and what the benefit is that you provide to your clients. So the overarching sentence that you usually use to describe your business in your marketing collateral Put that here. Here are a few examples. So now take some time to write your company description. Again, just a, two sentences that highlights what it is that you do really well. Your core competencies. This section is pretty straightforward. This is where you list what it is that you do for your clients. So you can list your products, your services, or summarize them into product lines and service lines. One thing you don't wanna do is list everything that you do. 
the kind of people that you are pursuing right now, they don't want somebody who can do a whole bunch of little things. They want somebody who can focus in and really do a few things exceptionally well. They have a lot of options. So if your capability statement lists all these different things that you do, they may wonder whether or not they should go with you or this other company that excels in the area that they are specifically looking for. Once you start working with them, that's when you can start introducing all those other things that may complement them. But on a capability statement, hone in on what it is that you do exceptionally well. Here are some examples of what those core competencies could look like. For past performance, I want you to put yourself on the other side of the buying table. Think of yourself as the buyer and what information you would like to read to learn more about a vendor and whether or not they are capable of doing something for a comp company of your size and scope. So when you think about what's similar, maybe it's based on the number of employees they have, maybe it's revenue, the industry, maybe it's having top secret clearance. You define what similar means to you, but you want to make sure that that information is there so that way the potential buyer that you are pursuing can see themselves. They can see, okay, this company understands my industry. They understand what it's like to work with a company that has 100,000 employees. They understand this and they're capable of doing the work. All right, so that's the first part of what it is that you list out under past performance. The similar size and scope company. The second thing is the result. What happened? So did you help them make money, save money, save time? Maybe there's a vendor out there that helped a company uh, install pipes that led to 30% reduction of waste materials. That stands out. That's memorable to somebody who's reading your capability statement. If you can add something that's tangible and measured and shows a direct impact of, of what it is that you offer, that's going to make your company stand out even more. So when you write your past performance, you want to list what it is that you did, who you did it for, and what the result was. Think of it like the list of uh, responsibilities that you may have on your resume. Same concept. What it is that you did for a relevant or similar uh, company and what the result was. And you may want to have about four or five of them that you list. It really depends on how much space you have on your uh, capability statement. So let's try out a few. Write out your past performance and then let's see how you do and come back and talk about it. differentiators. This is where you can really stand out. This is your opportunity to highlight all those things that people may not ask you about, to really show that you are unique from others without saying the word unique. There are some words that are overused on capability statements, and those who read them often just overlook them. So if you use the word or the phrase, we are a unique company, that doesn't say much. Whereas if you were to say, we were the first ones to be licensed to offer this product. We were the first ones to create this process. We are the only ones that have clearance to do this. That shows that you are unique without you even saying the word, we are unique. So think about that. What, what are the onlys that you have? So write that down. We are the only ones to, okay, and include that in this section. Another phrase that people often include that's not helpful in this section is we offer excellent customer service, superb customer service. I mean, there's just so many different ways to say we offer excellent customer service, which is what most companies strive to do. So it's not a differentiator. So instead, what could you say? Our customer service is available 24 seven. Our customer response time is within two minutes. That explains why, why your customer service is so great. Um, but without saying that simple phrase, our customer service is so great. So again, 
be descriptive of what it is that you offer. So don't use words that people ignore, such as unique or great customer service, or we are certified as, because you already have that certification listed somewhere else. So there's another area on the cap capability statement for you to list all your diversity certifications or industry, industry certifications. So you don't ne necessarily need to have that in the differentiator section. Use that for something else that's more specific and that does not fit on a different, in a different section of your capability statement. So words that you can use that are really interesting. So again, we have words that you people ignore, words that are really interesting. And, and just by coincidence, these start with eyes as well. So interesting uh, is innovation. What innovation do you have? If you can talk about something that you've done that's different, highlight that here. Invention. What have you come up with? If you can say we have a patent on X, Y, Z, that's interesting. Influence. So influence could be having, you know, thousands and thousands of followers. And if you are selling a product to a retailer, that's great. They want to know that you're going to help market that product. But in other instances, influence could mean that you post articles and you get several thousands people, several thousand people engaging with that article on a regular basis. If you can say that 5 million people uh, view our articles every year, that's interesting to a buyer, I'd say regardless of what it is that you're selling. So choose words that are really descriptive that they may not be aware of. So when you look at it in, in its collective uh, listing, that you are extremely unique, without saying the word, and that you are really ideal or maybe a good match for their particular project. Another thing you could add in this section, which does not begin with I, is the years of experience. So whether or not it's the company, it's a multi-generational company, or um, it's been around for 100 years, or you can say that you have you know 10 people on the team and between you all, you have 200 years of experience. Go ahead and put that down. That really stands out, that's interesting. Again, the whole uh, purpose of this is to really show how you are different from others and just do it within a few lines. So check out these examples so you can see what distinguishes you and what makes your business really stand out. I mentioned a couple of sections on your capability statement that would require some more explaining. So the two sections are certification and industry codes. So let's start with certification because for me, I procrastinated pursuing it because I thought it was really confusing. And then I also thought they asked for a lot of information and I'm really private. It wasn't until I spoke with my mentor who said, you know what, I felt the same way, but I knew that the opportunities were greater than my need for privacy, so I did it and she's a multi-million dollar uh, government contractor. So I highly recommend getting certified if it is relevant to your business and the type of projects that you want to pursue. So where certification came from is the fact that people tend to hire who they know. People tend to hire who they know. And if they run in homogenous circles, then people outside of that group are not going to get those opportunities. So different programs, initiatives, regulations, you know, it really ranges based on the industry or type of business that you're going after, whether it's public or private sector. But different institutions have created a way to screen businesses to find out if they are in an underrepresented group. Underrepresented meaning minority, women, um, veteran, um, LGBTQ, the ability community. So the reason why they want people designated as such so that there is a specific and intentional outreach to different communities to find out, um, find vendors that can add value to the supply chain. So not just the homogenous ones that were already there and people got comfortable, but the ones that are on the fringe who may not have the opportunities because someone is not willing to look at them. So that's how certification came about by providing more opportunities and essentially screening vendors to make sure they are who they say they are. So with the government, 
they have programs specifically for women-owned small businesses where um, they want to make sure that women have access to these types of contracts. And again, I don't want to get into too much detail here, but to do that, they want to make sure it is a woman-owned business and not something that uh, their husband runs or their brother runs or somebody else runs and they just use her as a front. So they screen people really in depth really in depth to find out that they are who they say they are. And then once they are certified, depending on who they're certified with, there are other programs and perks that come along with it. So one of the perks of getting certified by one of those private sector certifying councils, so meaning companies that certify vendors to do business with corporations, one of the benefits is that they have so many networking and business matchmaking events and just other ways to support you so it's more than just getting certified. Other ones do too, but there are some certifications where it's just you take 10 minutes and you sign up and you say that I'm a small business enterprise and, and that's it. But there are other ones where it's really more in depth and you are joining a community. So look into certification, see which ones apply to you, see which ones that are relevant to the audiences that you want to pursue, the clients that you want to pursue, and learn more. Again, there are so many organizations out there that will explain it, that will give you hands-on support as you create it. Um, again, we actually at Guided Business Plan, we're having classes, free classes, on how to improve your capability statement. So after you attend this session and you want to spend more time with us, join us. We're going to be doing this frequently and we'll keep you posted in terms of how you can join a session about how to improve your capability statement. And if you have questions about certification or anything that we've covered, please join us at this time. The other section I mentioned were, was industrial codes. So these are classification codes that make it easier for people just to type in keywords. So for example, if you are a um, consultant, there's a keyword that aligns, uh, there's a keyword that they could search for so that way they can find out what type of consultant you are. So if you are in a database of other vendors, it makes it so much easier for the vendor to type in, I'm sorry, it makes it so much easier for that buyer to type in that keyword to find out who you are. Now, the thing with that is, is that some people describe their businesses in different ways. So if they are solely dependent on keywords, they may miss certain people. Snakes, N-A-I-C-S. You're gonna hear this often. People pronounce it in different ways. I'm gonna call it the NAICS code. And this is a way that you can, um, this is a code that you look up at naics.com, N-A-I-C-S.com, to find out which one best describes your company. So that way, vendors or potential buyers, I keep saying vendors, buyers, when they are looking for certain companies, they could just type in this number as opposed to searching for all these different types of keywords. So look up your NAICS codes and find out which one is best for you. There are other industrial classification codes there's product and service specific code. So just as you get more familiar with um, the buyers that you're going after, whether or not it's a government buyer that requires the uh, NGIP code or whether or not it's a other organization that requires the NAICS code, NAICS codes, you can um, just create a list. So one of the things that I've done is I've created a spreadsheet that has all these keywords, my, uh, you know, vendor different different vendor registration numbers, different certification numbers, the, like I said, all these industrial code numbers all in one place because you're going to have to refer to it often as you um, submit yourself for different contracting opportunities or as you register in different vendor databases. So I just gave you a lot. Let's just highlight, we talked about certification and we talked about industrial uh, classification codes. So it's just a matter of you researching them and including them on your uh, capability statement. Depending on what you do, you may want to write the number for the code as well as the definition. The number for the code as well as the definition. I ran out of space and so I don't have that on mine, but for other industries, it's really important for them to be able to see the number and say, well, what is that? And then to easily reference it. So certification, industrial codes. Go ahead and take a moment to look those up.
even just start with the NAICS code. So just start with N-A-I-C-S, just start with that one. Look up your information and then come back. How do you feel right now? Do you feel like you're just a few days away from having a new capability statement that you can share with prospective buyers or that you can use as you register in different vendor databases? Maybe you feel relief, the fact that you've been wanting to do this for some time and now you finally have something concrete. Well, again, I just appreciate you so much for investing your time to make it happen. I wanna give you a next step though too. Guided Business Plan is offering a free capability statement review session just a small group session so we can talk about what you've written or share tips on how to improve certain sections or share other information that's relevant to diverse suppliers. I'm not sure how long we're going to offer this for, but check out the link below for more information on how you can register for a free capability statement review session where we will also highlight, again, the, the things that we talked about today, but try to give you some personal one-on-one -on -one guidance too as well. So hopefully you'll join us. Thank you again so much for investing your time. I'm Melanie Ray, the founder of Guided Business Plan. I thank you to the organizers that invited us here and just really appreciate you and I see you and I'm hoping that we can continue to create a guided path to get you to your goals. Become a dream fulfilled.